Hi all. Okay, so today I want to talk a little bit about MRuby uh, and integrating um, MRuby into your C++ code using CMake. Um, so just kind of briefly, what MRuby is is uh, yeah, I'm actually not too familiar with it, but uh, it's basically an embedded Ruby implementation. So you can pretty easily, uh, you know, it's kind of a minimal version of it uh, that you can link to your programs. And I think it missing a lot of the standard library and things like that but you can write real Ruby code and just you know have your scripts or whatever in, in Ruby and call that from your C++ or C or anything else. Um, so let's first kind of look at the documentation page here and they have this little article which talks about executing Ruby code with MRuby. Um, they have the REPL uh, which we won't talk about. Um, you can also generate um, you can also just call mruby or .rb files directly using mruby um, and then you can also have it as a string in your C++, C or C++ um, sort of Java-like or I guess kind of like any interpreted language uh, where you compile into a bytecode um, and execute it that way uh, we won't talk about this one. Um, and also the main one that we'll be focusing on today is bytecode C file, which essentially what this lets you do is take your .rb file and generate a .c. And then that generates something like this, and then you can call it from here. Okay, so that's what we're first going to do. We're first just going to go directly through this. Um, and then from there we will do the CMake integration. So here I have like a little directory uh, created here. I'm just going to create a source directory and within this um, let's first just create a .rb file. So we'll just call this um, hello world.rb and what we're going to do here, just very simple, hello world. Okay, and now if we open up a terminal, and I am going to first uh, export PS1 equals, just, to, just for your sanity and mine, uh, rename term, uh, we'll call this uh, Ruby tutorial. Okay, so now my terminal is named that. Makes things a little bit better. Okay, so I'm Ruby, hello world, prints out hello world. Exactly what we expect. Okay, so we'll just kind of scroll this up a little bit here. We'll split this in half. And we will run, we will write the C next. So we'll just call this main.cpp. Um, and first thing we do, include, if I can spell include, so we include mruby, and we'll include mruby irup.h. I'm just directly following what this thing says. So here we're going to deviate a bit since we're looking at a local file. So we're going to be generating this hello world.c. Uh, but of course, as you know, Emacs right now is complaining that it can't find it because, and look here, there's no file yet for that. Um, okay, so then. Why don't we run through this real quick? Okay, so MRB state, and I think there's a way to do this using smart pointers. Just have it automatically call this when we destroy it, when it goes out of scope, but we won't be doing that today. Just be following this directly. And actually, let's include IO stream here. Okay, so STD C out or C error, I guess. Uh, could not open MRV. Um, we'll return negative one. And we'll do MRV load and IREP MRV. And then our symbol name is going to be, what we call it, sample. Uh, yeah, sample is fine. Okay, MRB close. And we have our C file. Okay, so now let's try to build this. Okay, so first step is we have to call MRB. So we have our simple name here, 
which is what this is. And then we have our Ruby file here um, and we call it using mrbc. So we'll do mrbc b sample and then we'll call this on whole world dot rb. Now you'll notice that generated this whole world dot c, which is great for us because that means we can build it this way. So we're just going to call the example here is using C, but um, we're just going to be using G++ just so you know I'm on GCC 7.5 so I think by default this uses C++ 11 but I'm not quite sure. Um, and we'll just include uh, the mruby directory here um, and we'll call it on main.cpp and the other thing we need to do is link mruby lib mruby dot a g plus plus dot a dot out and voila we're calling ruby from c plus plus but of course but there are some limitations here so if i put uh you know goodbye moon right then when we call this again well it still only says hello world. Okay, so now we're going to do that CMake integration. So step one, let's create our CMake lists. So here we have a CMake list file, and I'm just going to do CMake minimum required version uh, 3.10. Perfect. And the project, um, we'll call this MRuby CMake integration consistent um, and from here we'll just add the executable uh, mruby cmake integration integration uh, and this will just be that and of course now if we try to run this make dir build cd build cmake dot dot uh, you can see cmake file ran fine but if we type in make Oh no, we, as expected, could not build because of linking errors, undefined reference. Okay, so uh, what we want to do is something like this, find package um, Ruby, and we're like, okay, so that's great, but of course there is no find, find mruby file for this. So we will need to add that in. So as this says, we need the find mruby.cmake in your CMake module path. Um, I won't go over how to make that here, but I have made one myself. So we can go find that. Uh, I will provide the link to this down below, um, but we'll just copy this over into the cmake slash modules directory. And we'll just do find mruby.cmake create that. Okay, so now we have this here, and you'll notice a couple things. Um, this generates these variables, uh, and we will use just these two for now. Okay, so first things first, we need CMake to be able to find this, because if we just run this now, you will notice that still doesn't change anything so let's do that uh, we need to set cmake module whoop, mm, module directory path don't want to override the existing one but we'll just do cmake current source Wow, underscore does not want to go today. Uh, CMake modules, and that way we have now added this to the path. And now if we run this again, you will notice that it has found mruby. Yes, okay, great. But we still have these errors. So as I mentioned before, um, if we go into this file, you'll notice that there are these variables up here. So we'll just uh, target link library, link libraries, and maybe CMake. Wow. Hmm. 
don't think I press that button that often, but okay, this is turning into a problem. Okay, anyway, uh, and then we'll also include directories, and we'll do and Ruby uh, include ders, and that way now when we go into this, you'll notice we now have this file generated here. So we can try running that. Hello world, excellent. But of course this goodbye moon doesn't come up and that's because we're still using the file that we generated earlier using mrbc. So that's the next part of this integration. We need to actually be calling uh, mrbc from our cmake file, cmake lists, and we are also gonna have to make sure that it changes when this file changes. So those are the two main things that we're gonna do here. Okay, so first of all, we're going to go uh, and use uh, something called add custom command. Um, so this is a nice little command where we can call any arbitrary command on the system. So we'll do that and custom command output. So this is our output file. Okay, but first let's actually add some variables. So, um, call this, first of all, we need the directory that we're generating this stuff to, or I guess uh, we'll call it the base name, first of all. So this is gonna be hello world. That's just the front part of this hello world.rb. Um, and then we'll set next uh, rb generated path. Um, or maybe output path. And we'll call this cmake binary dir. Well, we do current binary dir. Um, and we'll do generated. And one thing here is by default, if we try to do this, mrbc will complain that this directory does not exist. So let's add that directory. And we'll just do rb output path. Okay, let's actually make sure that that bit works first. So now you'll notice there's a generated folder here. That's the output of this guy right here. Okay, so well, it's generated. It's empty because we have not actually done anything with it yet. Um, so this is our output file name. So we need to create that as well. Um, put file uh, rb output path, and we're gonna call. E, this is gonna be rb base name dot c, right? And rb output or source file. RB, uh, or this is current source, uh, CMake current source directory. Sorry about that. Source directory slash, and why don't we actually move this to a different location? We're gonna have a separate um, directory for scripts. And we will move the RB file into scripts. So now, and let's also just delete these two so that we don't accidentally use them. So now in here, you'll see there's hello world to RB. Okay. So that's exciting. Uh, so we have our source scripts and then rb base name dot rb great and is that everything that might be everything okay well if we need to we can add more later um okay so the output file here so we're back to looking at this guy here Just let's increase that size a touch um so the output file name we just have here output file great 
And then we have to call our command, which let's look at what MRBC requires here. So use MRBC switches. There's the uh, output file. And there is the symbol name. So we will take advantage of both of these things. So first of all, here's the command. Uh, and you'll notice there's a separate args tag, which we will take advantage of, uh, dash o. And this is our output file name, output file. And actually, let's also set the target beforehand. So, uh, or the symbol, I apologize, sample. And then we also need our Ruby file, rb source file. Okay, so this is not quite enough. We still need a depends. Depends to tell add custom command that this thing depends on this file. Okay. And then also there's this verbatim, which I'm not quite sure, but the verbatim, I usually just add it in because it is recommended as it enables correct behavior since uh, this basically gets rid of any escape uh, or it just basically passes in directly and so it doesn't do any pre-processing on it so for something like this it makes a ton of sense okay so one thing you'll notice now if we just run it again still doesn't work and why is that it's because this guy isn't being run so we actually need this to be a dependency of this and specifically, because we're calling it from this file, we're going to add this as dependency of this. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to call set property proper t. Yes, not properties. Okay, so this basically lets us add a property to uh, to a file. So we're going to apply this to the source file, which is this guy, and we're going to add the property of um, objects. Object. Object depends. That's the one we want here. Okay. So let's go back to here. Set property. So set property source, um, and this will be our source main.cpp. Okay, um, and then the next step for this is we need to append this property, right? So append property, and what we're going to do is that object depends, and we're going to depend on RB source file, I believe. Um, or no, I'm sorry, that's the opposite. Uh, RB output file. Okay, so I believe that should do it. Um, and now if we call make, uh, it still did not work. And that is because I believe we actually did. Yeah, so we generated this now. So if we look in our generated directory, you will see there's this hello world. So that's a big step. Um, but right now, the problem is that it's actually not looking in that directory. So in our include directories, we need to add um, rb output path. And now, we call make, you'll notice built correctly, and we now have this nice little program called MRuby CMake Integration, which you'll notice it built this correctly. We'll try modifying that. Puts right the obligat you know obligatory YouTube statement. So type in make, and you'll notice it rebuilds. Um, and when we run this again, works. Um, so, I guess uh, thanks for watching, and uh, next time we'll be calling Ruby methods from within C++. Alright.